Hi folks, I am in Brighton, Michigan at Zeiss, and this is pretty cool. A CMM could play kind of two different roles. Number one, we could be using it for one-off inspections, but then you could also work it into your production flow for true statistical analysis over time of the bore diameters, the thickness diameters, looking at tool wear across boards, even at the level of sub-tents. More and more small shops that we get the chance to see are using CMMs. One that comes to mind is the tour we did with Seth Medor at Liberty Machine. Relatively small shop. He had a manual CMM then. I believe he has since upgraded to a CNC CMM, which is really the way to go. We're thinking about it, and we did a bunch of demos today with understanding how it could help us on fixture plates. There's not a lot of information out there about CMMs because they aren't maybe quite as sexy as a machine tool. So I wanted to learn more about it, but also share that with you. So we're here with Gary Rockwell. Hi, John. Uh, Hello, so everybody. tell us the basics of what a CMM is. Well, a coordinate measuring machine allows you to measure parts um, these are all automatic machines, so instead of measuring a part by hand on a surface plate with hand tools, this will do it automatically with a probe. We use micrometers, we use throat mics, we use bore gauges, and those tools are all uh, very good at what they do, but they're quite subject to uh, operator skill and preference. You can have a skilled operator who still just is a little bit, they present the tool differently, it just changes the way that tool works. And, and this solves that. Yeah, it takes out the human element of the measurement. It's automated, uh, it's very consistent, so you'll get very repeatable measurements automatically. We're, we're probably standing in front of the wrong machine. Yeah, though. this is the Prisma. <laughs> That's the gold standard of CMMs. This That's, is the Kern level machine, yeah, it's right? Yeah, very, very well, high level submicron. Will you show us the Duramax? Sure. We'll start down there. So the Duramax is a, a shop floor machine. Um, it's a, it has hard bearings and um, some covers, so it can withstand the a little bit harsher environment of a, of, of a shop. This machine starts out, a, there's a very basic model, around $50,000 and on up. This particular 50, 000, one has- 50,000, but that's still a, a full what I call CNC. Yeah, right. with software. With Calypso, with okay. Com complete package, yep. So this one has a rotary table, mm -hmm. and um, this also has a tool changer, so okay. you can have different uh, probe configurations. Yep and automatically change. Those knuckles happen to have one stylus each in them, okay. but you could have four and then another one down, so a total of five okay. styli at one time. Uh, we did a tour at a place called Mari Tool in Chicago, and I believe they had the Duramax literally right next to a turning center. Yeah, they're very common out in the shop, okay. and there's, there's companies that have dozens of them. Okay. Well. Our bread and butter machine is the Contour. Okay. And again, these are all built in the USA. They're built in Minnesota. This is like a two and a half micron machine. This is like a one and a half micron okay. machine. Uh, this comes in two different probe configurations. Uh, this is called the RDS, which is an articulating probe head with the XXT, which is a passive probe. Okay. And we can show that little demo oh, yeah, on sure. the uh, active scanning. With the articulating head, it, it can rotate every two degrees. Okay. So you have th about 30,000 different positions for the probe. Mm -hmm. You don't have to calibrate all of those. Um, the probes are calibrated on the, the datum sphere, mm -hmm. um, but it can interpolate by measuring about 12 positions, it'll interpolate the rest of them. Got it. And save you a lot of time that way. This particular tool changer has a, uh, a laser scanner on it and also a video probe on okay. it too. So you have those available. So the, the machine that you had quoted it recommended for us, though, was a step below this one. Yeah, it's called the Spectrum. Uh -huh. So it's instead of the two degree increments, it'll have five. Okay. It's a little bit less expensive machine. Yep. Probably more like a Duramax type accuracy as opposed to the Contour accuracy. Yep. And um, probably about 85% of the cost of a Contour. Okay. Being honest, we're on the fence. I absolutely see the value and I like it, but uh, you know, growth eats cash for breakfast. We've gotten a buy without one, so it's kind of a question of what does it let us do that we just simply can't do, uh, but then how does it make our product better? Do we use it, I'm actually thinking about it as a marketing tool. I know a lot of job shops, they have a point of differentiation. It's not just the machine tool, but it's the processes, the metrology equipment, the support around it. Uh, and the folks like the Seth Medors of the world, well, once they have a CMM, they will never, ever go back. So that's what I wanted to start to understand. Uh, and the one that, I don't remember the exact pricing, but it's, it's around low six figures, you know, about 100,000, I think, for the um, Spectra. Yeah, it'd be under that. Yeah, under that, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, don't, don't get me wrong, it's not inexpensive, but I had thought uh, CMMs in general, and especially the Zeiss brand, was, was more than that. You can have this become part of your production, can store this data right now, we print out individual 
QC sheets, and all that data is manual. So that's something that I really like to do is uh, get away from having that stuff stored analog, but also uh, there's very, it's much more difficult to look that stuff up, and there's the hassle factor of reading and transcribing and writing stuff down. So uh, th this contour right here has the RDS, the articulating yeah. probe head. There's another contour next to it that has the active scanning head. I'm hoping that uh, if Tom Lipton's watching this, he'll appreciate this, because the flexures and the design of this is really cool. So th this is an open view of the active scanning head with the parallelograms. Yeah. And um, this one's the passive scanning, so this, this works off of spring action, okay. where this is actually active and pushing and controlling. It's like a CMM within the CMM. Yeah, and I unfortunately don't think the video is just going to do this justice, but the, the smoothness and motion of this device, uh, both in the X, Y axis, but also the Z, see I can pull it down a little, is amazing. But when he says active, what he means is that this, this can hold a probe right down here, and it can push up against your part with a known amount of force, and it can maintain that force as it contours uh, in three axes. So it's actively pushing against that, maintaining right. as this whole stack you know, maintains its parallelism or rather perpendicularity to the surface. Right, so it can follow any, any contour. It's really cool. Yeah. And then as opposed to that, this one's a little less expensive. Um, it's a passive sensor, it's got springs, yep. same idea, but it's, it cannot follow the same contours that this can, nor can it handle the real large probes that this one can. Got it. To prove what that can do, take a look folks. This is the probe following my hand with constant pressure, so it does not, <laughs> we did not cat up my hand. How cool is that? Yeah. So next, after the contour with active scanning, yep. this is the Micura. Uh, we kind of call this the baby Prismo. This was actually designed and built here in the USA. Okay. Um, it was, there was a, a need mainly for the medical industry, but it's used in all industries. Okay. But it's a submicron CMM. Okay, wow. It's, uh, so you step from one and a half in the contour down to submicron. Yeah, it's like 0.7 okay. and um, extremely accurate, very robust machine. Uh, again, designed and built here in the U.S. and um, comes only with the active sensor Got in it. that case, which is needed for that accuracy. So that's it within the stack here. Can I touch this? Yes. That hurt? Yes. It's oh, it's it's amazing how silky smooth it is, and it feels. It's hard to think about that actually having the ability to impart force through that. Yeah. Very cool. So every CMM comes with a calibration ball. Mm -hmm. This one happens to have two because of the dot scans using a. A ceramic ball, mm -hmm. but every machine comes with a reference probe. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, so the machine's error corrected, okay, and it knows the length of this and where it is, and all the other tips that you put on. You can put on an infinite number of different tips, but it needs to know where they are, yep, so that they can all measure to, right, to we, each other. We saw that the Star Probe was using different right tips to measure the same part. So uh, the machine will come with a reference probe and then a working. So you uh, just don't use the reference probe for measuring. No. Why? Why not? Just you, you, don't you just want to take care of it and Got keep it. it keep Which it is it crazy to me to think that the rubies actually wear out or have some. Yeah, it would take a very long time. But yes, yeah, eventually but still, it would. Yeah. What is the state of accuracy on an Acura? This was probably about one and a half microns, but it's a very large machine. Right. So that's the point. One and a half microns, but that's in the volumetric envelope of a pretty large yeah, travel the, the area. Form, there, there's actually a formula we can um, look at some of them, but. You know, like for example, um, like the Dormax might be 2.4 plus L over 300. Okay. So it's 2.4 microns, but then every 300 micro or 300 millimeters, you would add another micron. Got it. it so that common sense for that size. Sure. Sure. So what you're you're doing now is just calibrating a new probe. Oh, that was. Got it. Got it. Oh, it's compensating for yeah. the bend. So you add a known pressure. Two, yep. Two different That's speeds. That's cool. And then two different pressures as well. That's awesome. Bring your hand back this way. We're just going to do your middle finger. We'll start okay. on one side and then go to the other. Okay. So we're going to try and spread them out as much as possible. That's as far as they and go. Then, Sorry. Right. And then this is a game of how still can you stay. You've you got to do the Spock thing. <laughs> <laughs> the more you move, the more the machine's going to hesitate. So we're going to give it a start point of right there. See how it hesitated? It's waiting for you to be still. Come on, measuring, serious? Measuring the pressure. So if you start moving right now, it'll just keep waiting for you. There we go. Now we'll give it a start point and end point, and we'll just give it an axis to travel. 
it's like a good drinking game. <laughs> who can who can who can get the quickest response time on a probe tip? All right. Actually, I think I can hold it right here. Okay. Ready? I hope so. Incredible. So you no, told it. The, the same. You told right. it. Yeah, yeah. You can feel it. You told it the start and end point, but it did not know that. It did not know that there was a finger coming out this way. Exactly. It so just the part that would confuse it the most would be rounding around the finger, right? Sure. Because it completely changes its direction. The vector. Yeah, yeah. But all it's doing is looking for pressure, right? So it's it's amazing. Able to maintain contact with the same pressure. With the finger. It's so cool. Yeah. That's really cool. So that's how you could take a, a truly. Uh, a truly sculpted object and create, can you create a cloud point out of that data? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. Yeah, so reverse engineering is all, it's perfect. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. That's cool. The machine that you were on is called the Acura, which yep. would be in between the Contura and the Prismo. Got it. And the Acura is a very fast machine. In fact, it's so fast it has light curtains around it. So mm -hmm. if you step into the volume, the machine will go into half speed. And it won't affect the scanning speed, but the, the actual travel yeah, speeds yep. for safety. And that's available with all sensors. You can get it with the RDS and or the active head. Okay. Um, you could actually swap heads on that machine. And then um, that one also has the dot scan, which is a light, uh, yeah. white light sensor. That's what we were seeing on this machine on the, here? On the okay. spec. that's yeah. correct. Yeah. So that's non-contact measuring. Yes. So it can do like a thousand points a second without even touching the part. Got it. And how is that accuracy compared to contact? It's you know, very close to the probe now. It, it, used to, it used to be with like laser scanners and other optical devices, they were like 10 times less accurate mm -hmm. than a probe. Now we're getting very close. Really? Yeah. That's cool. It's phenomenal. And then this one's the, again, the gold standard of CMMs, the Prismo. And this one happens to have the Rotos on it right now, which is a surface finish oh, measuring okay. device. This is me measuring RA? Yes. Okay. And it has, um, this machine also has a rotary table built in. Interesting. So the table, the, the motor and everything is down inside the granite to give you that flush. Why would you need a rotary table when you have a large enough work envelope and an articulating head? Well, the, the rotary table is ideal like for gears. Um, you can scan gears very quickly. Got and, it. Um, different devices like that or, or blades, things. Okay. There, there are definitely times where rotary is very handy. But couldn't you, you could still interpolate those by moving X, Y. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. In fact, we were making a joke earlier about the XTR, the rotating mm -hmm. probe head is the poor man's rotary table. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, a lot of people do gears with that. Got it. And round parts. Yeah, it's funny, things. I don't think about that, but I guess at a certain level, the speed with which you're able to get your parts pushed through a CMM really matters. It's yes. not just the isolated metrology one-off machine. These are used yeah. in volume. Yeah, in fact, um, a lot of machines are actually connected to a robot or automated, okay. and, and then yeah. they're just running production constantly. It's awesome. Yeah. We saw that at a, a shop up in the Toronto area called uh, Milterra that does a lot of the turbo mm -hmm. chargers. They had a Zeiss hooked into a robot yeah. cell. We, we actually have an entire group dedicated to automation. They do cool. complete turnkey systems. Um, they'll make enclosures for the machine if needed. They'll do the robot integration, all of that, cool. programming fixtures, everything. Cool. Yep. There okay. is one, there is another level above this though, right? There's the Prismo Ultra, um, but it actually also there's the Xenos, Xenos. which is okay. the, the top dog. <laughs> That's what I was trying to remember if we saw, I think it was at potentially at current, but there's not that many of those in the world, right? No, there's only a handful yeah. so far. That's cool. And I think we're up to six now in the USA. Okay. That's the one that you said is at uh, NIST? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Incredibly accurate. Yeah. It's cool. So it's actually really cool. You know, things like the new probing functionality in Fusion are letting you use a Renishaw probe as a type of CMM. Uh, there's problems with that, though. You shouldn't measure the parts on the machine that made them. And overall, or in general, CMMs are going to be way higher uh, accuracy, repeatability, longevity. You know, the things like the air bearings, it's really cool stuff. There's also some other stuff I think that's worth poking at, like the vision systems that um, we actually just saw one yesterday. At area 419 where they're able to just set a part on there and it pulls up measurements quite quickly through, vi through vision. Yes, just kind of randomly put the part on, hit the button and it measures it. Yeah, literally, you just set the part down and it sees, oh, <laughs> you actually, moved it during the measurement, our, but so we'll get some red. Part. And it's able to pull up programs 
to pull off measurements, datums, angles. This is incredible. So this is this is competing with your own CMM line, I would guess. In, in a sense, yeah. It's um, but it's it's two dimensional and okay. it's vision. Okay. Um, one thing about Zeiss though is it, it's actually um, ISO calibrated and certified. Okay. A lot of vision systems aren't. And there's no sweet spots. It's it's consistent throughout the area. Okay. So you can measure. You get the same measurements in one corner versus the other okay. corner. Okay. You don't need to worry about optical distortion. By right. So no matter where you put the part on, you're going to get the right measurement. This catches my eye because when I think CMM, I think okay, we've got to have setups and programs and skilled labor and all that. Whereas this, you think, holy cow, you can just set, pull a part off, clean it off, and send it on there, and you get measurements like that very quickly. That's yep. cool. Yep. Are these shop floor rated? It's not really for a shop floor like a Duramax, okay. but um, they're used you know, throughout a shop if it's reasonably clean. Okay. Is it more the temperature or the cleanliness that you care more about? It'd be kind of both. Okay. Uh, yeah. Got it. And um, so a step up from that would be the, the Owen spec. Mm -hmm. um, this is a true CMM, again, ISO certified, calibrated. Um, it has the probe and the, the camera. Okay. And uh, again, a tool changer, and so it does um, optical measurement as well as, as yes. probe measurement, and they correlate to each other. Yeah. And then the, the larger version of that is this one's the okay. 863. Uh, there's actually three sizes: the 322, 543, and the 863. This one also has that white light sensor we yeah. were talking about. I wish we so could. So it's actually measuring glass. Um, you can actually measure the thickness of glass, or you can measure the top surface or the bottom or surface. The bottom. It's incredible. Yeah. Can you only do that because it's transparent? Or could you do that if that was an opaque object as well? Uh, you can only do it if it's transparent okay. at both sides. Got it. Yeah. Scan across that part without contacting it. Uh, Gary, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah, the you. tour. Appreciate cool. you coming. Folks, as always, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.